Good afternoon YouTube and welcome back to the channel and today a very special video not just because we're at Box Hill aka Rikers Calf but we're also reviewing Kelvin's Yamaha RD 350 conversion just an absolutely bonkers bike and we're going to give you a full run through it now and the calf so I hope you enjoy. Okay, Kelvin, we are recording. So let's start from the beginning. Love for Lambrettas, where does it start? Well, Back before it, I was born, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it started in uh, 2019. I brought a project, right? Um, RD350. Yep. And um, I'd done the engine up. And um, once I'd done the engine up, I got a little bit bored with it. And I thought, how can I? How can I sort of go further with this? Yep. So I saw I saw a 1963 Lambretta frame for sale, and I thought, let's do it. So it <laughs> started then, as you do, it started then. <laughs> but it it's, it took it took about a year. Yep. The uh, the wheels a Paggio from a Paggio scooter. And did you know this, or did you just sort of try it? No, 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 it's all trial and error. So front and rear are from a Paggio. Paggio, they're uh, Paggio discs with um, Lambretta calipers. Yep. The swinging arm is Lambretta that's been cut down. Oh yeah, look at that in there. <laughs> Let me take off the side panel for you. Yeah, you let's can, have, you let's see, have a look at... You can see uh, what I was doing. Or the actually, idea you, of it. You've still got an RD350 as well, is that correct? No, 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 no. 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 I, what I'd done was, I brought the RD as a project, and then when I sold everything, the engine came out to be about cost me about a gram for the engine because I sold the yeah the, I, not the, I couldn't sell the frame because the engines actually sat in the original frame right I'll okay. show you oh so you've used it as a cradle to it's hold a it. cradle yeah. yeah awesome let's have a walk around while you're preparing the panel there you go it's okay it's only a clip off am I going the right side here no I'm not on this this side you want just look at it the way the blocks just out the side as well and does it have any running temperature issues at all Did not at heat? all because it's running a Volvo water pump Right, okay. Oh my God. It's running a, uh, a water pump because these pumps on these engines aren't very good. Okay. And what it does is because it's a long way back to the radiator yep. up here. You've got it in the front there. Yeah, there it is, see. Oh wow, look at that cooling fan. So it wouldn't have any issue in trouble with traffic no, or anything? No, none whatsoever. Okay, yeah, what so it we've is got is some space now. So you're saying about there's a Volvo water pump. So you've got an, uh, yeah, Volvo water pump that yep. pumps the thing through. There's an R, R1 fuel uh, pump on it because obviously the tank's down here oh, okay. it needs to go up there so the carburetor's had to be modified and as you can see what I've done is I've welded these brackets on here it so, just looks factory that's the most amazing thing well, about that's, it. that's the idea of it so what you do is you undo these and the two there there's two bolts in there and the whole lot comes off and you can just work on it that was the idea of it see 
And what's the damper? Is that a custom set up damper or just something you've tried with for the rear? Uh, I tried, this is the second damper I tried. The other one was just a normal, but that damper seems to work a lot better, you know. Yeah, it's a lot of trial and error with these things. But There's a lot of trial and error with it, you know. If you if you video underneath, you can see, I think you'll be able to see the water pump and all the pipe work. Oh, wow, yeah, look at that. See, it's a hydraulic rear, rear brake as well. <laughs> <coughs> so the big question is, how many hours have you spent building this? How many hours? It took me a year. Wow, man, I'm I impressed you've work done that in a year. I, I did it in a year, yeah. That's impressive for like the time frame and the level of the work, because even at a year, you'd expect it to almost be a bit of a guinea pig build, but... The thing is as well, on the front, I took off the inner springs, put outer springs on, and the other side is a anti-dive unit that I made myself as well. So what's your background then? Have you been to bike building all your life? Nah, I just used to follow me old man about in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it just looks incredible. The more you look at it, the more details you pick yeah. up. So I've done everything as cheap as possible. The, the forks, yeah. I got the forks from India, but the <laughs> different Lambretta forks, the Indian ones are a lot shorter. So what I've done was I just chopped them, made a spline and brought them up to the same height, see? But it cost ah. me, I think they cost me 50 quid instead of a couple of hundred quid, you know? So everything was done. Yeah, yourself in modified and custom. Modified, yeah. So engine wise, it's standard power or is this a modified motor? In no, 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 standard power. It's taken me a long time. It's running sweet as a nut now, absolutely sweet as a nut. And there's not a lot of room in there, especially like the air filters down the back there. Yeah, there's got little air filters on there. Not a lot of room at all. So what power is the RD350 standard? Pardon? What power is the RD350? I think it's 69, 68 brake horsepower. But the original, the original Lambretta was only six brake horsepower. <laughs> that is incredible. And the exhaust, are they? No, I made the exhaust. Made, made the exhaust as well. Man. And has it been set up on a dyno or just? No, 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 no. I haven't. I'm not. I'm not into racing or setting up. Yeah. But as long as it rides and it sounds, but I'm I'm happy with it. You know. It's just just the more I look, like you say, just all the little details, like the badges. And have you had any niggles, any problems with it in the time since you built it? Oh yeah, yeah, mate. Loads of problems. <laughs> Two stroke line. The hard, the hardest problem was getting the Lambretta wire. Sorry, the Lambretta front wiring to the Yambretta left. Yamaha rear wiring. That was the hardest. That was the hardest. So no. uh, the, the kick this you've got a kick start there, see? Oh, so you just the oh, bat so in here. Plug it. I see. See what you do is just pop that in. Right, got it. I don't know. You need I made a jig for it. You said You've you got to make it. a jig for it. And then uh, once the jig was done, then I managed to put the frame, the engine, the swinging arm that's all been cut down onto the front and, and brought it dead straight, you know. Dare I ask, Kelvin, have you added up what it's cost you to build it? Was that a secret? It, no, no, no. <laughs> Altogether, it's cost me five, about five and a half grand. No way. That's all. Because when I brought the RD, sorry, the RD project, yeah. I sold all the bits and pieces yeah. and made money back from that. And the rest was the cheap, cheap headstock, yeah. the cheap forks from India, you know, and then just put it together. Grand, right now. Oh yeah. Grand, the silly well, I, yeah, I, I brought the engine in. I brought it about, it's about three and a half years ago. Who did the paint, Kelvin? Did you paint uh, it yourself? It's well? a paint shop in Chesington, o OSC. They did the paint. Oh, okay. And this is all the RD running clocks, right? That's all the RD running stuff, yeah. So are you running the RD CDI? Yep. And then you've got the loom to power the clocks, and then is it Lambretta loom as well, or is it a custom it's loom? It's a Lam Lambretta loom running through, and it all runs in the tubes. So see this tube here? Yep. It, all the wiring runs in that tube coming to the back. And all the gears are up here, one up and four, five down. No, so you still kept like, the traditional yeah, land yeah. shifting. And does it work well on the road? Compared? Yeah, it works well, yeah. yeah. It works well. That is so cool. Do you know what's amazing about it? Is that everything here, everyone's coming to see this. Literally everyone. Like, everyone <laughs> stopped and had a look just to see what it's about. <laughs> You'd be biased. <laughs> but the final question I have to ask, What's it like to ride on the road? <laughs> I told this gentleman here, I've had 90 out of it, but any more, you want two pairs of underwear. <laughs> Trust me. We get lively in it. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. slightly lively. But, but I guess with that power, it'll do that. with no trouble at all. Uh, well, I've geared it exactly the same as the YPBS anyway. Right. So it's exactly the same gearing, obviously shrunk down, but it's the same gearing. So 90 is not, it goes up there quite easily. Obviously only on a race track, <coughs> we'd never do that on the road. No, 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 I, don't, I haven't never done it on the road. <laughs> <laughs>
did you eat, Serge? I only had a sausage roll. Oh. Was it any good? Um, it was quite nice. Don't lie. <laughs> Sean? <laughs> Burger? Sean. <Did> <laughs> Well, it's going down. yeah, it's going down. So five and a half quid for a sausage baguette with a Coke, but we'll give it a whirl. So the food at Rikers is all right, to be honest with you. I've had better from CAFs and I've certainly had a lot worse. But what I will say is the atmosphere there is fantastic. There's loads of parking. And as we're showing now, if you leave the CAF, take a left, then a right, shortly followed, you can actually go right to the top of Box Hill viewpoint, which is absolutely stunning, especially on a good weather day like we had, you can see for miles. So again, got to say a big thanks for Kelvin for giving us the full tour around his bike. What a lovely, lovely build. I'm not normally a scooter, person but this thing is just next level cool with that engine shoehorned in there if you've got something equally as bonkers that you'd like to get on the channel do let me know either drop me a message on instagram or an email that's all detailed on the channel description and we'll get a feature sorted hope you all enjoyed the video if you did and you want to check out more automotive cafs of the uk please check out the links at the end of the video until next time thanks for watching